Welcome back to a new Chashi lesson with me, Stefan Herder. And uh, today I'm back from the tea mountains in uh, Shaninshi and Alishan. Uh, and uh, I was able to find some very, very nice uh, high mountain oolongs from this spring. And uh, I'll show you how to brew uh, one, the Shaninshi Day 2, harvested on uh, May 3rd. 2020, so today is the 9th, so it was just harvested seven, uh, six days ago. Uh, we'll take a generous amount, maybe might use it less. We preheat our guy one, you know the drill now. Uh, this many videos, as many lives have shown you how I'm brewing tea and uh, oolong especially in a guy one although almost always the most important step is the preheating of the vessel and not just the cup itself but also the lid Sunset now. Where is that? Late afternoon in Taipei. A good time to drink some more tea. Now very freshly harvested uh, Hamilton oolongs are very powerful, so it's not necessary to take so much, so many leaves. Uh, the rule is simply to put a one good layer of leaves at the bottom of your gaiwan or teapot, and that's usually quite enough for high mountain oolongs, since they're going to open up very large. Now, uh, this particular tea was, so was harvested six days ago, um, and uh, I was really impressed by the plantation I saw together with the farmer. Uh, it's uh, very well managed. Um, the tr trees had been cut last um, spring uh, to make them shorter so that they are easier to, to harvest and also uh, so that there would be fewer leaves uh, to increase the concentration of the aromas in these leaves. So this year it's uh, can say it, uh, at a peak again uh, in terms of concentration. Uh, I also saw that uh, he was uh, quite careful in uh, the way he's um, uh, adding uh, herbicides for instance because I could see the small green uh, tea acid that is also responsible for the bites of oriental beauty. I could see it in the, uh, in the plantation the day after the harvest, which means uh, that the, the plantation is uh, free of uh, pesticides, otherwise uh, it wouldn't come there. The, there were also still a lot of um, uh, small buds, small leaves that had not been harvested, uh, which surprised me a little bit because it seemed to be a, a, a waste uh, on the plantation. But uh, the farmer wanted to leave a bit more leaves and not harvest everything uh, in order not to tire the trees so that uh, they are better protected rather than if they are come, if all the leaves are taken out, then this uh, will uh, deplete 
uh, exhaust the trees when they have to make new branches, new leaves. And by leaving a, a great number of leaves, uh, this actually is a way to preserve uh, the, the tree and uh, then you don't need so many fertilizers uh, and um, also he's not going to uh, harvest the tea in uh, summer but only in spring and uh, winter which is also uh, good uh, you don't need uh, also so many uh, fertilizer for, for this reason now the color is really uh, jade green very fresh very uh, transparent Mm. and it has um, a wonderful smell. I don't know if it's because I'm not... I haven't traveled to, uh, to France in a long time uh, but um, the smell of these um, dry leaves they remind me of um, the forests of the Vosges in, uh, in eastern France uh, very peculiar smell of um, so um, already cold uh, uh, mountain forest smells uh, pines but uh, in Chinese there are also lots of bamboos there were lots of bamboos uh, on the sides of the plantation and some bamboos even growing inside uh, the plantation because they were uh, uh, the seeds had flown into the plantation and uh, this was uh, another good sign I, I thought that um, he's not using any herbicides to, um, to get rid of these bamboos here. Yeah, he was just pushing them uh, with uh, manual manpower to, to get rid of them. Mm. Now, so I selected two harvests, the day one, May 2nd, and the day two, May 3rd. And um, uh, what's interesting is that within just uh, one day difference the character of the tea is uh, quite different now the second day uh, here I feel is uh, more feminine more elegant uh, uh, a bit more soft the uh, fragrances are maybe not as exuberant as uh, on the day one uh, so for me it's uh, and since the leaves were so tender so uh, yeah, they were picked very very tender, very small, um, the aroma is really very very fine and um, this year the uh, weather was uh, really great. Uh, we had very cold weather uh, in um, April, maybe a bit too cold for uh, Jinchuan in Alishan uh, and uh, Wenchan Baozong, maybe it's, this made it a bit too, um, too light, uh, well if you like light uh, oxidized uh, oolong then it's good so it was really perfect now for um, Shanin Shi uh, because then at the end they really received a more normal amount of uh, sunshine it was very sunny during the harvest mm. and um, this tea does not feel like Shanin Shi actually it feels like Lishan it's uh, really amazing how, um, how we find how sweet and uh, how fresh it is Well, I have not um, uh, been able to uh, taste um, tea from Lishan, but the farmers in uh, in Alishan and Chanichi that I spoke of, uh, and who are um, also uh, often the same, who are going to Lishan to harvest, they were a bit um, pessimistic about um, uh, Lishan um, oolongs this year because it was a bit too cold in uh, early spring and uh, there was a lot of uh, frost damage in these uh, very high plantations. Mm, but not in uh, Shanin Shi in uh, Ali Shan over there. Uh, it was very cold but uh, this year it was not uh, to the point of uh, frost that would uh, damage the, the leaves. Perfect, perfect. It's really easy to drink, very fresh, and um, it lingers well. Amazing. And 
the leaves have well opened up. You see I did not use so many. Mm -hmm. And let's do a second boo right away. Mm -hmm. Now this uh, Shaninchi has uh, more complexity also than uh, the Dreyfung Alishan that I also selected, which is a uh, a bit more basic uh, high mountain oolong that uh, does really the job very well at a very interesting price. Uh, but if you are looking for something that is uh, that has more aftertaste, more complexity, then Shaninchi is really this year's uh, uh, really so far one of my so far my favorite actually. So I'm going very slow. Now I move carefully the leaves around in the guy one so that they expand evenly. Okay, I'm looking at the color. Trying to also to smell when it's sweet enough. To, to say about this uh, this um, the difference also between the Shannon Shi and the Alishan is um, the uh, farmer in Shannon Shi he added a very very light uh, roast uh, a better dry an additional dry to the dry of the factory in, and this will help the tea preserve um, longer and uh, and better uh, maybe it has slightly reduced the fragrances but uh, this tea is also uh, very aromatic because it was uh, harvested very very small uh, so uh, in this regard it's not really a big problem okay. ego beautiful color very light, very green. Mm. And very, very nice sweetness. And good coating. What else? What else? Mm. And simply with the guy one, uh, you get uh, to be back in this plantation, oh yeah, the, uh, my pictures uh, there on the um, website uh, also show that within uh, maybe the, uh, the hour I spent in the plantation, we went from um, fog to sunshine, and this is really the uh, what you really want in these high mountain uh, plantations. Uh, uh, times of sunshine, so that the leaves grow and get uh, energy and times of fog so that uh, the cold and the uh, moisture uh, help to preserve the freshness of the leaves. This is how they grow uh, quite long without getting uh, bitter. And uh, while in uh, Alishan uh, this week it was already quite, uh, quite warm uh, during the day, in uh, Shanin Chi, in the afternoon, I, ex I could experience this uh, phenomenon that uh, on one, one moment you had uh, 
with strong sunshine and uh, the next moment you had uh, the clouds coming and uh, cover the, the field and you almost cannot see the, the mountain uh, that is uh, 500 meters away from you. So it's uh, also interesting that within uh, central Taiwan, uh, Shanin Shi and Ali Shan are maybe just separated by uh, uh, 40 kilometers, it takes you one and a half hours uh, to drive from um, one point to the other. Uh, because of the mountainous roads, uh, but it is uh, a big uh, change in terms of uh, landscape, uh, so and uh, elevation also. Uh, with Alishan and, uh, being a little bit lower than uh, than Shaninchi. Okay, cheers. Mm. And this is also reflected in the fact that the very first. Uh, high mountain oolong I have comes from Zhuifeng, then from Jiangshu Wu, both in Alishan, and the later harvest happened in uh, Shanxi. <laughs>